guys. Welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the studies <laughs> are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, never in front video. Of the camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I'm so excited to have you worshiping with us today. Happy Sunday goes out to my sailors and to all of my young adults and college uh, students who reach out to me and ask some amazing questions. I love you guys so much. Hang in there. Um, don't grow weary in well-doing. And Happy Wednesday goes out to my littlest viewer that watches No Walls every Wednesday. Uh, I'm excited because we're going to be doing salt and light. Um, today's focus is going to be part one and we're going to talk about salt. And then next time we're going to do part two, which is light. We're going to be talking about um, being the light. Um, but before we start, um, I do want to say thank you all so much for your gifts, for giving, for your tithes, for your offering, for your obedience to God um, in giving. And uh, I received a video Friday. Yes, I received a video Friday um, from a young lady and I thought it was um, just an amazing video and I wanted to share it with you all because it is, uh, the video is a result of what you do um, here at No Walls and I just want to let you know that I appreciate it and here's a special thank you. Hi, my name is Gloria. I am a newly diagnosed breast cancer survivor. I have completed my six treatments of chemo. I'm awaiting a double mastectomy. Um, this is my third time completing uh, or beating breast cancer. I want to give a shout out to some people that have made some donations that have helped me. Um, Free Spirit Baptist from Reverend Dale Forrest, No Walls Church, Reverend Lee McMurtry, Daryl Abernathy at Farmers Insurance, Ron McNeil Painting, LaVita Moss at Team Miller's L, Greystone Power, Publix, Kroger's, all the donations that y'all have made for the Gertrude House has um, helped all of us. And I just want to give you a big shout out and tell you thank you. Amen. That's awesome. And I just want to tell her that we are continuously praying for her and um, especially for Gertrude's House. Gertrude's House is a nonprofit breast cancer awareness organization who operates, they operate 12 months out of the year. So they are year round and they are constantly um, being of service to those fighting breast cancer. And here at No Walls, we are actually praying for everyone with cancer, um, cancer of different types, as we know this disease. Um, is um, one that you know God is more powerful than so that's why we pray because we know God can do anything <laughs> um, and so thank you again so much to Gertrude's house for all that you do and thank you all at No Walls for giving so that we can be a part um, of what they are doing so today we're going to be talking about salt um, and our whole scripture is going to be Matthew 5 13 through 16 but today since we're just doing salt we're going to focus on Matthew 5 verse 13. Matthew 5 verse 13 says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot. That's Matthew 5 and 13. And so today's uh, subject is really easy. It's I'm salty. I'm salty. Um, okay, so in our day and time, um, it is not good to be salty. <laughs> Um, it's amazing how we take things that are in the Bible and we pervert them or change them or make them fit us versus their true intentions. Um, and so I think the first person that was ever salty in a bad way um, probably was Lot's wife. If you remember, she was so focused on, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah and the wrong and the evil. God was like, oh, okay, you salty? You salty about me pulling you away from the world? Okay, salty, salty. <laughs> and she turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> so um, I don't know if it's really a good thing to be salty as the world would say it. Um, but I love this passage of scripture because we know um, who we are. 
we are the sons and daughters um, of God. Um, and because of that, we've inherited, um, you know, we're, we're the siblings of Jesus, basically. So we've inherited grace and mercy and, you know, the kingdom of God and, you know, all that is wonderful and wonderful and great. But this verse tells us our role. It tells us what we are to do. Um, people say all the time, well, I don't know my purpose in life. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, you're supposed to be salt. That's your job description. You're supposed to be salt and light. Um, and so I want to talk about salt today um, in three different ways. Um, I want to talk about salt as a seasoning. Um, and I want to talk about salt as, um, you know, you can have too much salt. And I want to talk about salt as an extinguisher. Um, and probably, these are probably three that you're like, I have no idea what you're going to be talking about. I, I don't either. It's just how the Holy Spirit gave it to me. So I'm going to give it to you that way. Um, we know salt um, as a preservative, as an antiseptic. We know that it's bad for an open wound. But I'm going to talk about seasoning. And I'm going to talk about it um, as, you know, when we have too much salt. And I'm going to talk about it as an extinguisher. First of all, it's important to know that in this chapter, chapter 5 of Matthew, um, this is what we refer to as the Sermon um, on the Mount. That's what its name is. That's what we, we call it. Um, and Jesus was um, telling his disciples at the start of this, we call it the Beatitudes. And he was talking about, you know, blessed are they, or some people say blessed, however you want to say it, blessed are they, blessed are they, um, that are meek in spirit, that are humble, that um, are persecuted for the sake of Christ, you know. And he, he talks about what we would inherit. The thing about this is that it doesn't talk about those who are right, what you're going to get. So you are having a disagreement with someone, you and someone are at odds, you and someone haven't spoken in years. It doesn't talk about what the prideful will gain. You're going to gain nothing. <laughs> you don't get nothing. <laughs> you don't inherit nothing. <laughs> um, just because you're right, just because you're prideful, just because you're first, just because you're taller, just because you have more, just because you, you know, whatever. No, 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 no. This, in his Sermon on the Mount, he's telling you, He's identifying who is blessed and what they will inherit, what the reward actually is. Um, and, you know, we talk all the time here on the walls about humility because humility is the whole key to it. Like, it, if, you, if, you, if you have love, it compels you to be humble. You know, if you have real love, um, it, it, it compels you to be a peacemaker. Um, and this right here brings us to you are the salt of the earth. That's what brings us here to this point. Um, and that um, that's what salt is. It's a seasoning. Um, it is the aroma of the Holy Spirit. Like that's really what it is. Is that when you walk into a room um, and people are excited that you're there because the aroma of the Holy Spirit is just resonating off of you and, and they can sense that. Um, if you look back in the Old Testament, I'm going to say Leviticus because I know that's where a lot of the laws are. But um, in the Old Testament, um, salt was very important, uh, very important. Salt was you bring a sacrifice to God and it had to be sprinkled with salt. It had to be seasoned specifically with salt. How did they get salt? They took buckets, dipped it in water and let the water evaporate. Um, and then what was left, what remained was salt. That's crazy. We're the salt of the earth. If you think about it, um, if you go out to the beach, um, if you're if you're on the beach and you're out there in the ocean water, no matter what, no matter who you are, I know you don't do it on purpose. Don't do it on purpose. Please do not do this on purpose. Do not drink the ocean water. That's not what I'm saying. But um, if water happens to get on your tongue, on your taste buds. Um, it's not water as you and I know it, you will taste the salt. And that's amazing. I have all the water on the earth, like the ocean, water. And still, that water is going to taste like salt. No matter how big this earth is, 
people ought to taste the Holy Spirit because there ought to be enough of us sprinkling it around and spreading the Holy Spirit around so it will just be contagious. It'll make things better. Um, and so that's what salt is as a seasoning. Um, salt is not bland. Um, you know, it's just like if you prepare a meal, you can cook it the best you know how to cook it. But without that seasoning, you know, people are like, oh, this is good, um, but it's missing something. Um, you're doing good works and you're feeding people and you're being nice and you help them, but um, it's still missing something. Your good works are not enough if they're not sprinkled in love. <laughs> if there is no, if there is no love behind it, if there's no humility behind it, um, you can't do things for people and then go back and go. Well, the only reason why she has it is because I, 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 me, me, me. If it wasn't for me, that's like cooking and leaving the seasoning off. That's like making a sacrifice in the Old Testament and there is no salt. It's of no use to anybody. It's not good. No one will consume it because it's like, oh, it's too bland. So when, when Jesus is saying you are the salt of the earth, that seasoning is valuable. It is important. It is so that um, when you are doing the work of, of good goodness, then they know it's, it's, it's not you. It's not you doing it by your own power. They know that there is grace and mercy and love and humility and meekness attached to it. Um, you know, it's the fruit of spirits, love, joy, peace, kindness, long suffering. Um, people want to know that they've been forgiven. Um, you don't announce when, once you say, you know, I forgive you, or, you know, you say that you have forgiven. Um, you can't keep reminding people that's, that's making a bland meal right there because it's not sprinkled with the love of Jesus Christ. So salt as a seasoning, we are supposed to be the ones to change the atmosphere. We're supposed to be the ones to make things taste better. So first we know salt as a seasoning. Um, like I told you, we know that it's also um, an antiseptic. It's also, um, you know, it preserves. But it's also designed as a, when it's seasoning, when you, when you use it as a seasoning, when you season the atmosphere, when you eat food and it has salt and you can taste that salt, you know what else salt does? It makes you thirsty. And so when you are seasoning the atmosphere, when you are seasoning people's lives with the Holy Spirit, what happens is it makes them thirsty. They want more that, you know, like that, like they want to drink of the living water. You make them, you, you, you make them desire more of God and, and hungry for more of God. Um, I think it's Lay's potato chips that says you can't just eat one or Pringles or somebody says you can't just eat one. And you know, it's true. You eat one potato chip. You eat that one potato chip and the salt on it makes you say, okay, well, just one more. Okay, just one more. And then when you look, you're like, oh my God, where did they all go? Well, you sat there and you ate them all because <laughs> it did not fit. One could not satisfy your appetite, your thirst, your hunger for more. And so if you are truly being the salt of the earth, people will want more. They'll desire more. They will go look at the word of God for themselves. They will pray more. They will worship more. They will want to be more like Christ because they will look at your life. And they will see the seasoning in your life and say, okay, if that's what God is doing in their life, I want more of what they have. So we have to be the salt of the earth as a seasoning. Too much salt can cause high blood pressure. It's true. That is a fact. Too much salt. Um, there's a scripture that says uh, man ought not think more highly of himself. Um, it says, judge not, <laughs> so that you are not judged. Um, and sometimes what happens with us is that we put ourselves on a pedestal. We are the reason for our own grace and mercy. If it wasn't for us, you know. Um, and so too much salt turns people away from God. You, you walk around with a cross earrings, a cross necklace, cross ring, cross bracelet, cross shirt. You'll drive down the car and says, Jesus is my co-pilot. Jesus saved. Jesus is everything. Don't talk to me unless you're talking about Jesus. They call you. You say, hallelujah, praise his holy name. Like, like it's so much that, you know, it, it causes people to just be like, I, I can't. 
can't. I can't think. I can't function. I can't hear you. I can't go with you because it's too much. And so sometimes because we are so excited about what God has done for us that we forget to meet people on their level. We forget that in that seasoning, you can't put too much on there. You've got to put just enough. You have to sprinkle it. You have to give just enough for them to want more. Too much causes high blood pressure. You pressure people into saying they're saved and they are not. The word of God also says that many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast down? He's like, I don't know you. <laughs> we don't want to pressure anybody into serving Jesus Christ. We want, we want to love people to Christ. We want to, 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 to be there for people. So if they want to, to chase after God. So, you know, being the salt of the earth is a, is a seasoning and it causes people to thirst after God, but too much salt, too much salt is not healthy. It is not good. We judge people and say, well, you know what? How many times today did you worship God just once? Oh, don't think you're going to make it in because you didn't worship him enough. And God's like, listen, that's a sin within itself to think that your actions are what's going to get you into heaven. It's not your actions. It's, what is t it's the action of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross and got up in three days. That's what's going to get you into heaven <laughs> right there. That's what saved you. And so our purpose and our goal, if you are just working for money, if you are getting up and you're just doing absolutely nothing, um, then you are not fulfilling your purpose. Your purpose is to be salt, to season, to be a seasoning, to make people thirsty for Christ, but not to be overbearing. The last thing that I just want to talk about, which is kind of embarrassing for me, is salt as an extinguisher. And I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, I'm probably never going to hear the end of this. Um, and I know about six people that are not going to let me hear the end of it. But whatever. Whatever. <laughs> it's a true story, so I got to tell it. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So this one time when I first got married, I, um, we lived in an apartment and, um, I was go driving from Gwinnett to Athens, um, to go to the campus, to University of Georgia to finish my last, uh, I had two classes remaining after I got married. And so I was driving from my new apartment to Athens. And I actually worked in Athens as well. So it was like I would get home really, really super late um, at night a lot. And so I actually, this one time, I actually was beating my husband home. And I was so excited. I was like, um, but I'm so tired. I don't feel like making dinner. But I know what I'll do. I'll make some hot dogs. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to make them like my mom makes them. So my mom does not... Uh, boil hot dogs you know on the stove top in the pot she actually puts them in the oven on broil so that they will be like that charred kind of good like really really good and so I was like I'm gonna make some hot dogs and I'm gonna make chili and we're gonna have hot dogs like just the two of us can have these little hot dogs whatever so I beat them home and I was tired so I put the hot dogs in the oven on broil and I go sit on the sofa to wait and I fell asleep and the hot dogs caught on fire and the way they caught on fire the grease there was grease from them that was dripping and it was it was awful so sitting on my counter with salt. I took the salt and threw it on <laughs> and put out the fire because it set off the alarm and everything and that's what woke me up because it set off the alarm in the apartment. And so my stove and my oven were covered in salt which was a mess to clean up. My husband came home and he was like, do I smell? <laughs> yep, yep, you do. Yeah, you that's what you you yeah. Whatever you say. <laughs> if you're asking me do you smell smoke, a fire, 
something burnt or a hot dog, whatever, whatever's on your list of things you smell. Yes, that's the answer. And I thought, oh yeah. He was like, how do you burn hot dogs? And I was like, first shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. I can cook. I can, I can cook. And I tried to explain to him that I fell asleep. And he was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I did, I did. I really, I fell asleep. And um, so I used salt to extinguish this fire that had broke out over these hot dogs. Yeah. Um, so what's my point for telling you that? That salt... <laughs> salt can put out grease fires. And actually it probably is what you should use to put out um, a grease fire. So I used salt and it was everywhere. It was all over the kitchen and it took me a while to clean it up. But, 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 but it worked. <sighs> As salt of the earth, after you stop laughing, there's a point to this. Um, As the salt of the earth, we are also created to put out fires. Um, the Word of God says, do everything, do everything in your power to keep the peace. Do everything you can to keep the peace. Even, even, especially, especially if it's your fault. <laughs> And sometimes we'll be like, I don't, I don't need to say I'm sorry. I'm not going to say, you know, whatever. They, they don't do this and they don't do this and they deserve this and I don't care. So the word of God is saying, do everything, everything in your power to keep the peace. And that means extinguishing fires. Fires um, can come because of something you have done. Sometimes you don't even cause the fire. Sometimes um, God just sends you into a fire. And that goes back to where that judging comes in. And it's not designed for you to say that you're better, you're here to save the day, or it's because of you. It, he's sending you in because you are the salt of the earth and nothing else will work except the Holy Spirit, except the Word of God. You want to know what your purpose is? Your job is to be the salt of the earth, of the whole earth. And too much, too much, you know, I'm better than you and I'm holier than holy and I never make any mistakes and I'm the greatest ever can cause high blood pressure. It can cause problems. It can cause people to turn away from the Holy Spirit. It can cause people to not even want to know who God is. But if you can just season the atmosphere with your love for Jesus Christ, if you can just go when you don't want to go, if you can smile when you want to cry, if you can laugh when you want to hit somebody, <laughs> then you will be the seasoning that God created you to be. Remember, we are the salt of the earth. Not just any seasoning. We're salt. Salt is found in abundance. And the thing, this question in this verse says, well, if salt loses its saltiness, how do you get it back? You can't. You can't. It gets thrown away. Salt actually doesn't lose its salt, and that's the whole point. So if it loses its saltiness, then that's it. That is it. I'm salty. I'm not Lot's wife salty. <laughs> but I'm salty because I want to, I want the presence of the Holy Spirit to consume me so that I can season the atmosphere when I speak, so that I can season the atmosphere wherever I go, so that people will know that Jesus lives. What is my purpose in life? To be salt. To be salty. So that people are thirsty for God. So that people want more of God. As, as a preserver so that we can preserve um, the truth when we speak. Again, this is, 
This is the Sermon on the Mount. We don't even want to read really the rest of chapter 5. <laughs> the salt, him telling us that you are the salt of the earth and, and we are the light is stuck between him saying, be humble and you and these are the things you'll inherit. And if you keep on reading, it talks about all the stuff you can't do. <laughs> it tells you the consequences of not being humble. Chapter 5 of Matthew. Part 2 we're going to do is going to be the light. And we're going to talk about the light, being the light of this world. Anytime the word of God goes forth, we offer Jesus Christ to you today. We ask that if you do not know who he is, that today you will decide that he is the savior of this whole world and that he died on the cross and that he got up three days later and that he has left this earth to go prepare a place for us that where he is, we will be also. There's a lot going on in this world. And God is coming back and we don't know when. Five minutes, five days, five months, five years, 500 years. We don't know when he will return. He's coming when we do not expect it. Be sure that you are the salt of the earth. Be sure that you are a child of the Most High God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now just saying thank you so much, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for calling us out of this world and into the knowledge of who you are. Thank you, God, for considering us to be salt, God, for us to be that seasoning, God, that makes people thirsty for you and makes them hungry for more, God. Remind us that we are to do everything to keep the peace, God. That we are to be peacemakers and that we are not to stir up trouble. We are not to make fires bigger, God, but that we are to help put them out. That we are to be extinguishers. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you would continue to do a new thing in us. God, I ask that you would protect everyone watching, God. And I ask that you would enlarge our territories. These and all other blessings I ask in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us on the walls. I am so excited um, to see what God does next week. And I can't wait to tell you so much about the light, about being the light. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.